He followed the way of the messengers. So we would say, for example, in the time of Jesus, people have to follow the teachings of Jesus and worship the one that, who sent Jesus, worship the, the God that Jesus worshipped. The same in the time of Moses, the same in the time of Abraham. But now we say that the last messenger has come, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He came about 1,400 years ago and he clearly said, or the Quran commanded, it said, Qul, ya nas, inni rasulullahi ilaykum jami'an. It says, where Allah commanded the Prophet, say, say to the people, I am the messenger of Allah to, to all mankind, to mankind, Jami and all of them. So we believe every single person now on the face of the earth, they have to accept the last messenger. So, for example, you know, in the time of uh, Moses, if someone was following Moses and worshipping God, and then Jesus comes as a messenger, those people would have to, they believe in Moses, but now they have to accept Jesus. Yes. So Jesus, when Jesus comes, they have to believe in Jesus. They have to accept him. Because the thing is, when, when God, Allah, sent someone, when you accept the messenger sent, you are accepting God. When you reject the messenger, you are rejecting the one who sent him. But the same way, 600 years after Jesus, another messenger came with the Quran and he claimed and he said that he was a messenger for all mankind until the last day. And he said that there'll be no messenger after me. There, he, there's an authentic hadith. You know, in, the, in Islam, we have two things. We have the Quran, which, we, which is the word of God, the last revelation preserved, sent down for all mankind. And we have the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So in the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, he, said, he said that after me, there will be 30 great liars. All of them will claim to be a messenger. But I am the last messenger, so I am the last prophet, and there will be no prophet after me. So there were people like al Masailama, there was uh, Elijah Muhammad in America, there was a person in India called Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani. These people, they all claim to be prophets. But you can see, even in their lifetime, in the beginning, people accepted them, but towards the end of their life, people rejected them and people left them. The only messenger, you can see that the message has been preserved and his way of life has been preserved, his teachings have been preserved, and people are still following him and people are still accepting him, is the Prophet Muhammad So you don't believe anyone came after him? No. We believe Jesus will come back again, but he will come back as a follower of the Prophet Muhammad Oh, the Prophet Muhammad, oh, we, we say all the messengers were human beings. They were born from parents, they became hungry, they became tired, they had the needs of human beings and, and they worshipped God. Jesus himself, we say, was a had a miraculous birth. He was born without a father. But this doesn't make God his father. Like, for example, Allah mentioned in Quran in chapter 3, Allah says, Verily, the example in the Mathal Isa, the example of Jesus with Allah, is the example of Adam. We created him from dust and we said, Be, and he was. So, the same way Adam was created without a mother and a father, Jesus was created without a father. So, we believe he was from the virgin birth as a miracle, and we believe that before he died, he was taken up. He didn't die. Wa alayhi wa sallam. Ah, yes. But, but we believe that Jesus, he will return. What about the ayah? Our sister? One oh, moment, please. Okay. Yeah. No problem. So we believe Jesus will return. But from the reasons why Jesus will return, it's because he, of the, all the messengers, he was the most misunderstood. They were, for example, the Jews, they rejected him. They said he was a false prophet. They said his mother, you know, had a, had a child outside of marriage, which obviously in those times particularly was, you know, a very grave accusation. And then also in the time of Jesus, there was those people who actually believed that he was the messenger sent by God and he worshiped God alone. And then after he died, there were those people who began to say that he was God or he was the son of God. 
So therefore Jesus will come back and he will clarify that he was a messenger of so God. He's a yeah, he's a prophet. Not the, the word justice like belittling, but he yeah, yeah, he was no, a great no, noble no, messenger. No, yeah, prophet. No, no, yeah, not God. Yeah, not God. But even if if you if you look, if if even if you re, if you read the Quran, it's very clear. If you read the Bible, it's also very clear. But even you know this, uh, God has created us with a mind. He's created us with intelligence. When you see that Jesus, he prayed to God, he worshipped God, he called upon God. He was born from a woman. He became hungry. He became tired. He used to learn. He increased in knowledge. According to the Bible, the father knew when the last day was. No angel knew the last day. The son didn't know the last day. So you can see very clearly that Jesus cannot be God. It, I, and it's something which Christians, they struggle with because... Is there a Quran here? So, sorry? Is there a version of Quran? Yeah, there's, we have a leaflet on the life of Jesus and then in the Quran, if you, if you, if you can remember chapter 3, chapter 5 and 19, they deal a lot with Jesus. Chapter, chapter, chapter 3 is called the family of Imran. Imran is the father of Mary. So the family of so Imran. It's all about like Jesus and his family. Not, not all, but a lot. It's a, a lot about Abraham and a lot about Jesus. Then chapter 5, it, it mentions a lot about the Jews and the Christians. Because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was an Arab and he was sent to his own people and then he was sent to all mankind. So first he addressed his own people and then the message spread. What's the police? I'm in the Shay. In the Asir. Afwan, give the sister a drink, please. Yes. So, um, sorry. Yeah, so, but all, because he was sent for all mankind, the Quran it, it addresses the Jews and the Christians a lot also. But particularly in chapter 3, chapter 5, and 19. 19 is known as uh, Surah to Maryam, the chapter of Mary. So if you read the first half, it covers the, the life of Je the birth of Jesus, about the angel Gabriel being sent to uh, Mary, giving her glad tidings that she would have a child without being touched by a man, and also when she took the baby to her people, and the message of Jesus, that he was a Inni Abdullah. Verily, I'm a worshiper of Allah. Al Kitab. I have been given the book, and I have, and I have been made a prophet. This is clearly in Quran. How does that sound to you? Does it, interesting, but does it sound reasonable? Yeah, it sounds reasonable, but yeah. I'll read more because right now like, I really want to choose something. I don't no know problem. How I feel lost. No problem. So that's why, thanks for the Can I just, uh, just, just some advice? Yeah. The most important thing, obviously, is to have a clean heart, be sincere, and want, want to accept the truth wherever it comes from. Yeah, I don't care. Like, yeah. I will okay. I really need to find okay. Yeah. So that's the one thing. That, then, secondly, or connected to it, turn to God. Oh my Lord. Oh my Creator. Show me the right, the right way. Give me the ability to follow. And then, on top of this, I would say study. But w when you study, you know, take notes. If something is uh, you're not sure about or something is not clear, just write it down and then you can go and find someone trustworthy, someone knowledgeable and ask them. They're just, uh, the, the thing is I can talk a lot, but I understand your time is limited. In chapter 2 of the Quran, I think verse 256, it mentions something very interesting concerning this. It mentions, La ikraha fid deen. It mentions that there's no compulsion in religion. Islam teaches there's no compulsion. We can't force someone to believe in Islam the same way we can't stop so, so you can't stop someone from believing in Islam. There's no compulsion. But then it mentions that the truth is clear from misguidance. The truth should be clear. When you hear the truth, it should make sense. Your heart should recognize it if, if your heart is clean. So, thank you very much for your time. All the best. Thank you.